Do you think the East Sled Boxing thing has much life, or will it fizzle in one to two years? Here's the thing. I'm not 100% sure. And the reason why I say this is because uh, celebrity boxing was a thing, and it, it, it is a thing. You know, uh, East Sled Boxing, you know, uh, crossover boxing is the new celebrity boxing. Uh, you would see these weird little things pop up from time to time. Like, they had them in, uh, I believe, the 2000s. Uh, it seems to be a fad that comes and goes, is what I'm saying, right? Now, the difference here, and I'm not saying that it is going to be different. I'm just saying that if it is different, this is going to be the difference. Uh, there's never been anything like Misfits before. The production value, the, willing to, the willingness to be creative, the everything about it is basically the hallmark right it's got all the hallmarks of a legitimate fighting promotion or a legitimate fighting uh production honestly like watch bkfc uh there's a lot of things about bkfc's production value that are fucked up like there's always some weird shit where uh it'll be like joe schmo versus joe blow right and the fight will be at 185 pounds but the tail of the tape will read joe blow 28 years old 275,000 pounds. Like, there'll be weird typos and shit like that, right? Uh, you don't have that with Misfits. And in addition to that, they're actually better in many ways than BKFC and even in, so in some ways like boxing or the UFC and things like that. I think it's very interesting, the gimmicks that they're coming up with. You know, Tag Team, I think it could be tweaked a little bit, but I think it has promise. Uh, what I would like to see is the implementation of Muay Thai, or at the very least, kickboxing. Because they've shown that they're willing to really jump outside of what is considered to be acceptable within the boxing realm, right? Uh, which is kind of what they were doing in the first place. Because I remember when influencers first started boxing and everybody in the boxing world was like, Oh, fuck you guys. I'd like to see them implement kickboxing. And they wouldn't even have to call it kickboxing. They could call it like a special rules match or anything like that, right? And you could add and take away. You could you could base you could build your own martial arts uh thing, I guess you could say, right? Uh you could have matches where it's basically just taekwondo rules, right? You're only allowed to kick. That's it. You could have matches where it's full muay thai, uh elbows, knees, uh clinch work, punches, kicks, sweeps, other things like that. And you don't even have to call it muay thai. You don't even have to call it Taekwondo. You could just call it special rules match, only kicks. Special rules match, punches, kicks, knees, elbows, clinch, right? Or you could give it its own wacky name. And you could have a bunch of different kinds of fights on one card. You could have a night where there's a, a tag team match followed by a Taekwondo match, followed by a few boxing matches, followed by a kickboxing match. It's fucking anarchy, dude. Anything goes. Every man for himself. I don't think it's a good idea to have a situation where there's more than two people fighting each other at a time, excluding tag team. And on a technical level, it is two people fighting each other at a time. It's just people are subbing in for each other. What I mean is like a two on one versus a, or um, a, a free for all, every man for himself, you know, a Royal Rumble per se or anything like that. I don't think that's a good idea, but I think that influencer boxing in its current iteration, specifically with what Misfits is doing, it's going to potentially give it more life than other iterations of celebrity boxing. I don't think influencer MMA will take off. I actually did a very short video on that. It was actually another stream. I ended up talking about it. You can't really have a situation where two people who don't know how to ground fight are ground fighting because it's just, it's not going to go over in a way that's entertaining. Maybe it will be entertaining to the absolute sociopaths out there, but what's going to end up happening is you're going to have dudes falling on the ground and whoever ends up on top is just going to be the winner and that's that. And everybody's going to feel really bad for the loser and people might even be actually like really upset about it because again as soon as somebody ends up on the ground uh on bottom right they're not going to have much that they can do i'm not going to say they have absolutely nothing but it, it's not like the person knows like okay i just got mounted i have to get to my side i have to shrimp out i have to recover guard now i have to stand up from bottom right they're not going to know that Really, when it comes down to it, there is too much of a learning curve for grappling for people to do what they're doing with boxing, which is just, oh, hey, it's a month and a half, two months out from the fight. I guess I better get in a gym. You need, you would need people who already know how to ground fight, right? So, er, uh, ervert, ervert, overt flow, right, is a perfect example. 
Bottom line, um, will it fizzle in one to two years? I'm going to say I'm not sure, but I don't necessarily think that it will. They have a contract, uh, Misfits, again, they have a contract with DAZN for what I believe is five years, dude. That is insane. And this is this is something that only just started, well, not this year, but last year. And it's a bunch of like idiot YouTubers who most of them don't know what they're getting themselves into. And then Faze Sensei. You know, it, it, it is pretty insane to see how quickly it has grown and what is going on. And because of that, I'm not sure if it is gonna fizzle. I think it does have staying power to some degree. Though, at some point, the fad will die out which is part of the reason why I'm going to try to make it to a million subscribers tomorrow. I can beat up on Andy Worski.